Now initially when my grandfather and my father moved, they, they lived in a house behind. But then they moved further down onto this front one. And you can imagine the bombers coming this way, back out over sea and straffing this street. There wouldn't be this roundabout or anything, but straight over Seam Harbour. Makes that Tommy statue quite um, emotive, doesn't it really? So as we come back towards Easington Lane, can you imagine just looking left and right and seeing nothing but pit heads with the wheels and collieries? Absolutely beggar's belief. Absolutely beggar's belief. But you see, back then, being a young boy, well, that's what it was, wasn't it? It wasn't as if all of a sudden they appeared, they were there when I was born. And my grandfather on my mother's side, my mother's dad, he worked in the collieries all his life. All his working life. So we're now back in Easington Lane. Just there on the left, it used to be a hairdresser's or a barber's shop, anyhow. That's where I used to get my hair cut. Where are these memories coming from? We borrowed an old Austin A40. I'm sure it was an Austin A40. Austin Cambridge, I think, shaped Model 1 to go to Blackpool in. And I jumped over the back seats and kicked the, the handbrake and knocked the handbrake off and we rolled forward into the car in front. My God. Interestingly, where these traffic lights are, that's where the railway used to be. There used to be railway track running left to right taking the coal from some of the Durham coal fields where? to Seam Harbour and we're now coming into the area that's called Rayton Bridge and that's where we moved from we moved from Easington Lane down into Rayton Bridge the house was ultra modern compared to the one at Easington Lane with stone floor in the kitchen and everything. Easington Lane was a modern house. My bedroom was at the back and we overlooked an old railway track. Back there where the lines were, there was a colliery down here and that's where the trains used to go over there from. Now called Rayton Meadows, but it used to have a colliery there. Whacking great slaggy. But that was the house there, the one with the jeep in the front. That was the house that we moved down to. And at the back of there was an embankment from an old railway line. And I caught a bumblebee in a jar. And I threw the jar into the undergrowth. So that bumblebee will have died in that little jar. I wouldn't even be eight year old, I'd be something like six year old here I would think, five or six, someone, even five year old. So 45 years later, 55 years later, bloody hell, um, I can remember that, poor little bumblebee. But that's where we moved into, Rayton Bridge. And that's where I was brought back to, covered in shit. Now coming into Chilton Moor, this is where, well really, the top end of fence houses. And this school on the right is the school that we used to play football against. Oh, it's now a heating place. That was a school.
and just on the left here where this red car is the first shop used to be a butcher's shop now it's happy walk <laughs> but that was a butcher's shop and I tried desperately to get a Saturday job there because I lived in this area until I was 14 and just on the left here that's where Dubmire School used to be and that was the very first proper school I went to and on the right here the dental surgery and that's where my mum worked Fence Houses Dental Practice she worked there as the dentist receptionist for years now I've mentioned that there were two episodes where I experienced near death the first one at Easington Lane where I got German measles in a temperature that high but here's the second one the street that I've just moved off from it was at this junction here where I ran from the front street bloody dogs ran from the front street to see a guy who lived in that house there and I was run over by a wagon here broke my leg fractured my skull just there 50 years ago bloody hell <coughs> the ghost whoo and that's where we lived 55 Rose Avenue where that car is parked there it used to be a garden with a cross in it and my dad brought some stones from near the beach at Sea of Harbour and he didn't realise he didn't realise that um, it was illegal he nearly got charged because of it but that top right window was my bedroom and after I'd been knocked down this is where we came back to after I'd had my plaster taken off and I used to look at my mother from that small middle window walking to work when I'd made up an excuse I didn't want to go to school and I would sit on the toilet so she had to leave and so I was left in the house on my own I don't know what the hell I got up to but it was also on these streets where I learnt to smoke walking around picking up the dumpers and lighting them that house was also where I saw my mother cheating with another man the dog was barking and I came downstairs and she was stood at the back door with another fellow with his hands on her ass and in that bottom right window is the front room and that's where I was told my parents were divorcing A lot of memories in that house. I lived there for 12 years. <laughs> 12 years I lived there. And in the back there, that's the back kitchen. And it's where my mother had a knife in her hand and shouted at my father. Get away from me, you bastard. <laughs> so this street is where I used to walk down all the time. Walk up and down. Run up and down. Just on the right there. I don't know if it'll still be there. It was the road to the playground. With the swings. No, they're long gone. But as you got to the bottom of this road, where you see the thermal stuff on the top that was a children's home and my best pal Kevin Thorogood with his brother and sister lived there no fuck no that was it that was it there 
That was it there, that was the children's home. And we used to go all over here. All over here. But just at the bottom of this bank on the left, that was the cafe and everything from the pit was there. That's all getting knocked down as you can see. Ah, it's still up. Just after this bridge on the left there, there's a building and it's going to be behind these gates. And that was Lumley Deep Pit Baths. And it was in those baths there that I became the youngest person in Britain to achieve the Gold Personal Survival Swimming Award. Youngest at the time. I was eight years old. And that's where the pit used to be. Over there, all that area was the cork works. Steam rising up into the air. The pit cork works. But in that building there was the baths. I was the fastest swimmer in school in those baths. Mr. Murtar, good God! Mr. Murtar owned those baths and used to go through a turnstile, walk on the coldest floor. There was a foot bath before you got into it. Everybody tried to nick off without going through that. But I used to be in those baths every day. After school, home, get me towel and cosy. And off we went. And then here was a canteen where you could go in get a cup of tea and ginger biscuits and cakes. No, no it doesn't. No, no it doesn't. Me and my pal Kevin Thurgood went everywhere around here. These houses on the left, that used to be the YMCA uh, fields, playing fields. And we used to play footy. I would take turns, I'd be Gordon Banks in goal, then he would be Peter Shilton. We spent hours there. Hours! <laughs> 